In this video, I'm going to answer a question from one of my readers, Sold Lab, who asks, how do you overcome the fear of rejection while selling? So I'm going to share with you a couple of strategies that I use, and hopefully you can learn from that and put it to use in your business as well. The first is you have to know that the product or service that you have is actually going to be helpful and useful for the person you're talking to. And that may seem like common sense, but a lot of times, you know, you may not actually believe in your product or service that much, and it's then harder to be convincing and make a good sales case when you're talking to your, your prospect. For me, most of the sales I do uh, are pretty standard and you know, I'm in the, the groove and it's pretty comfortable. But every now and then, as I'm growing my business, I'll get more and more you know, corporate interest and bigger deals that are coming to me. And every time I'm on the phone with a client that could be you know, my new biggest deal yet, there's a little bit of nervousness and a little bit of excitement. And I'll always calm down by reminding myself that you know, what I'm offering them is really, really going to help them. And that's what I focus on. So I'm not focused on you know, trying to be nervous uh, or trying to really sell them. I'm just trying to help them out as much as I can. The second thing is try to be a resource and sometimes you don't get the sale and you give customers away. Uh, so one of the things that I'll sell is a mastermind group and that's a, a group where we'll connect entrepreneurs together every month and we talk about our businesses and try to help each other out. And that's a paid membership that I'll make some money from. And when I'm talking about that group, it's never a hard sale. It's more trying to find out about the challenges that my you know, prospect is going through and seeing if it's going to be a good fit for me or not and a good fit for them as well. And most of the time it is, but sometimes it, it may not be what they're looking for. And in that case, I'll pass them on to somebody else that might be a better fit. So you know, as an example, sometimes I pass people on to a business coach where they maybe need a little bit more intense uh, system to work with so working with the business coach makes sense instead of joining a peer group uh, that we have in the mastermind group. So if you're open and honest and you know that you're you know, trying to help them out as much as possible, I find that really eases the fear of going into that initial meeting. The last strategy that I use is something called negative reverse selling and that's when if you think about when somebody tries to sell you and they're saying you gotta buy this, buy this, buy this, your likely reaction is gonna be I'm not buying that, you're going to back away. So the approach that you want to take is the opposite. And if sometimes we go negative on it, people have a tendency to want to take the opposite view and, and go positive. So a couple quick examples. After I'm doing a presentation, so if we're talking about the mastermind groups, for example, I might say, you know, talk about all the different benefits of it. And then at the end, say something like, hey, does that make sense to you? Or is this coming out of left field? And usually they'll say something like, oh no, it makes sense. It's great. It's, you know, it's exactly what I wanted. And so by going a little bit negative, it makes them go positive. Or if I said at the end, you know, this is the best thing ever, you really need to buy it, they're probably gonna take a more defensive stance. So people like going the opposite of what you're doing. Uh, another example is if I'm selling to a bigger corporate client, I might say something like, you know, we've been able to help out a lot of different corporations, but it only really works. We can only help if you're targeting the entrepreneur community. If you're not targeting entrepreneurs, then you know, I don't think we're gonna be able to help you. And that's the truth. You know, if somebody's trying to target managers at banks or a different target audience, I'm not going to really be able to help them. But if target entrepreneurs, I can't. And by saying statements like that, they always come back and say, no, 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 we're targeting entrepreneurs. This is our market exactly. We're looking forward to learning a little bit more about what you do. And so it gets them saying yes and gets them involved. And by me going negative, it also reduces the fear of them saying no. Rejection leads to success. All you have to do is look at the people that you look up to. Look at the people that I profiled on my YouTube channels and what you'll find is rejection after rejection after rejection. So rejection leads to success. You know this. Intellectually, you already know this. But when you get into the situation where you have to face rejection, then your emotions take over. Your fears take over and you don't do the thing that you might get rejected for even though you know logically because in that moment, your emotions, your fear are greater than your logic. I had a life-changing fear of rejection situation happen to me in Paris when I was 18 years old. And I was there when I was on a street outside the Notre Dame Cathedral and I had a map in front of me and this cute girl comes up to me and she asked me for directions and I wanted to ask her out and I was too afraid, I was too embarrassed, I was too ashamed, I was too worried that I might get rejected. In my head, the only thing I could think of was I want to ask her out and she might reject me. She might say no. And so what did I do? Nothing. Now, if I had logically stood to the side 
press time out, you know, pause the situation and say, Evan, logically, what makes sense? Logically, you know, she might say no, and you're okay, you'll move on with the rest of your day. Logically, she might say yes, why is, why is she coming up to you asking for directions? Why is she asking for directions when she already speaks perfect French and she seems like a local, right? Logically, that's what makes the most sense. Logically, I should have summoned the courage to go off and do it. But in the moment, your emotions take over. Your fear takes over. That idea that you might get rejected takes over. And so what did I do? Nothing. I let her walk away. And ever since that day, I reminded myself that I would rather know and fail than not know. And I use that painful moment to whenever I am thinking about doing something I'm afraid of rejection for, or afraid of it not working out, then I have to do it. That, that moment is what led me to become an entrepreneur. Because a year later, when I had the chance to have my dream job and make 100K a year, travel around the world, or be an entrepreneur, own 30% of a business, and make $300 a month, I had that picture in my head where I was thinking, I can't let this happen again. I don't want to live with regret. I would rather know and fail than not know. And that gave me the courage to keep going. So I know you guys know this. I know you know it intellectually. I know every success story that you read is motivating and is inspiring to you and you see all the rejections. But then when you get faced with it, when you're face to face with that fear, you tend to play small. You tend to do the thing that you're not proud of and then you tend to live with regret. So how do you get rid of it? How do you get through that tough situation, that fear of rejection and not let your emotions take over? I'm gonna give you a three step strategy that will help. Step number one is create a stronger negative emotion. So people say, be fearless. I don't, I don't think you can. I think, I think if you're living a, a great life, you should be constantly doing things that you're afraid of, right? If you have no fear, then it means you're doing something that is normal, that is inside your comfort zone. You're photocopying your life over and over and over again. So it's not be fearless. It's when you are afraid of something, at least for me, create a stronger negative emotion which is regret. So here's what I would do. The next time you're in that moment, you're afraid to do something, right? Fear of rejection is creeping up. Imagine yourself as a 95 year old. You're in an old age home, you're sitting on your rocking chair and, and life is almost over for you. And you think about the past X number of years, decades between where you are now, where you are 95. And this moment right now was the thing that would change your life for the better forever. And because you were too afraid, you spend your entire life regretting not doing it because you very rarely regret the things that you do. It's the things not done that you regret. And so you've just spent the past X number of decades in regret, hating your life because you didn't do the thing. And at least for me, that creates enough pain that I have to do the thing. And so you create a stronger negative emotion. You don't overcome emotions with logic in the moment when you're very emotional. You overcome emotion with a stronger emotion. And the easier way to do it is to go negative. And so the pain that you're about to face is very real. I just create a much bigger pain so it forces me to action. Just like if you have a hangnail, it hurts, but if you punch yourself in the arm or somebody hits you, you don't feel this anymore because this hurts too much. So create that pain of regret, a future regret that if you don't do this thing, you're gonna hit your life forever. And so now you're able to do that small thing, that small scary thing and face possible rejection. Strategy number two is create a stronger positive emotion. So instead of going negative, you go positive. Now I love going positive, but I find the negative actually works better in these acute situations, but net, I wanna be positive. So the positive solution is, I wanna be a hero. You wanna be a hero, you wanna be strong. You tell yourself that you're strong for doing these things, that you're a hero for doing these things, that you're getting stronger, that you're building muscle, that, that you do scary things that you're afraid of rejection, that, that's not a good enough reason. That you do scary things because you are a hero, because you're on a mission, because you're gonna change the world, because you're gonna have a huge impact. And that means you have to do it. So it's not trying to fight it logically because logic won't work. Again, logic doesn't work against an emotional situation. You need stronger emotion to combat the emotion. So just saying, well, they probably won't reject me or what's the worst that's gonna happen is not as powerful as I am a hero. I do difficult things. I face rejection. I risk things not working out. I risk humiliation. And I get through it because I am a hero. So step one is go negative. Step two is go positive. 
And then step three is expect to suck and tie your self-worth to the effort. One of the big problems people have is you tie your self-worth to the outcome. That if you don't get a yes, then you suck as a human. You expect to be great, and then when you're not great, you hate yourself, right? And then you expect to win. And when you don't win, you hate yourself. This is, this is why people don't have self-confidence, self-respect, self-love. Because they tie their self-worth to the result. Where you want to do the opposite. You're going to go do this thing that you've never done before. And you're going to suck at it. Like everything else you've done that you've never done before. Doesn't mean you suck as a human. You just don't have the skills yet. Because it's the very first time that you've done it. And then you tie your self-worth. What you love about yourself. Where your confidence pulls from. To the fact that you were willing to try. Not to that you won. Because tying your self-worth to winning means you only do things that you're going to win at means you play small for life. Where if you tie your self-worth to I'm going to try things that will risk failure, that will risk rejection, then your life will grow exponentially. Because you're not worried about hitting the outcome, you're worried about the growth. You're worried about you building, you learning, you growing as a human. And if every day you're off doing things that you're proud of your effort for, I guarantee you, your life will look dramatically different one year from today. So try it. One, create a stronger negative emotion. Two, create a stronger positive emotion. And three, expect to suck and tie your self-worth to the effort, not the results. If you want my view on how to find balance in business and relationships, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. You are not alone. Time management is one of the biggest issues that entrepreneurs are facing, trying to figure out what to focus on with their business and have it all balance out.